What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Heavy Wrench. Thanks for tuning in today. I appreciate it as always. I am sorry about the delay in all of the content coming up, but I have been working with this Daltus diesel laptops. I'm going to show you a little bit of what I did and where I'm at right now. And we're going to do some time support from them on a Monday. It's Monday uh, at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I just called them, left them a message and said they're going to call me back. But I'm working on a DT 466 International 4300 and the code that I have is we're gonna get to it right now let's go over here um, I lost communication uh, I guess I have to rehook to that to show you the code so let's go hook to that um, this Jolta system has been pretty uh, pretty phenomenal actually I uh, you know you just took the connector into the 9 pin no big deal um, this is the box, um, looks pretty much like a, uh, normal, um, Nexic box, but we're going to turn it on. We have a check engine light, um, and I'll show you, I'll hook it up to it right now and we'll, uh, we'll see what it says. I got my batteries running low on my computer, so I'm hooked into my, hooked into my truck right now. So I'm going to flip this around and we'll see if we can get you set up here show you here how fast it connects so it's connecting we're connecting right to the engine it's a 2002 so it says 9804 um, read fault codes we've got a couple other fault codes but this one here is one that I unplugged it um, but here's the boost pressure voltage below normal here is some actual Jaltist uh, stuff here so you can go here read a little bit about there Fault code troubleshooting, you have to pay for that through Jaltist. But uh, you come back over here and you click see if more information about the component. Here it is, it shows you the actual component, it tells you what pins A, B, and C are. This is while you're looking at it, right there in a nice clear picture. And then you come down here and it tells you it's right there on top of the engine. Well, I went to that component and looked and uh, Looks like a bunch of, it tells you all sorts of stuff. Your operating voltage range, um, display measurements, blah, like what the pressure is supposed to be. Um, it tells you a lot of good information on that. And then if you go over here, um, and I don't know, I'm not trying to um, down anybody, uh, Texa or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but you close that out, you go over here to this little wire here, and uh, you pick your transmission, open it up, and check this out. This is really cool about Jaltist, I think. And maybe Texas does the same stuff. But see how it's highlighted in blue right there? Shows you the map sensor, pins A, B, and C, and where they go on your controller. So that is right through Jaltist. Um, I have not gone anywhere else. But then, so here's the issue now. I went to Diesel Laptops, and on here, I cannot find the map sensor and my, my uh, October 2000 is September 2002. This was January 2002. So we're definitely good there. Um, it doesn't tell me anything about the map sensor on here. I've looked a couple of times and I have not seen it. So like I said, about 2 o'clock I called them, left them a message. And I'm trying to go through. But this is their wiring diagram right here. So I'll let you know when I uh, get on the phone with them. But as far as that goes, this is Jaltist, and I'm uh, I'm liking it. I'm liking the diesel laptop support. So I will tell you, because right now it's 207 on the computer there, and I called them at uh, um, about 2 o'clock even. So we'll see how fast their support is, and uh, this will be the true test for them. But, all right, so I'm going to get after it, and uh, I should show you that plug real quick while we're here. Let me hop up there and show you that plug. Here, the wires. I've already skinned back the wires there. Put the plug up on here. That's what the plug looked like when I took it off. Now, either the hood hit it, I don't think the hood would come down that far. I think something shoot it off, but that's what it looked like. And these wires were all just kind of tucked right back in here, like that. So, I cut back the harness. We got some wire numbers on them. I just need to know which ones to do. I have a pigtail here. That I have uh, 
saved off something else that is exactly the right pigtail. Same sensor connector. And I'm gonna wire that in and it will be fixed. So we're gonna go from there. So stay tuned for the end of this video. I appreciate you uh, checking it out and putting these laptops to the test. All right, it's 7.20, or I'm sorry, 2.21. Still haven't heard back from him yet, so we're gonna go rogue. We're gonna get on this, hit the question mark here. Takes us over here to help. And we're gonna go over here. And I always try to take a picture with my phone so I don't have to tear you the laptop up there. So I'm gonna show you doing that real quick here. Not that it matters, but. So I'm gonna take a picture of the A, B, and C. And then I have a picture already of the uh, of the wiring diagram, and we know that we're gonna look here. I'll show you exactly what I was looking at before. So we're gonna pull this up a little bit, zoom in, I should say, and we're gonna come over here. So what it shows us V is your positive, A is your negative, and C is your signal return. So we're going to see if we can't figure that out with a multimeter. So let's go do that. We're going to shut the key off. And we're going to try to see what well, we need the key on for that. My bad. So we're going to see if we can find what we need to find. So I don't know where I can set you to give you a good view here. Let's see if I can set you right here. Does that look good? Yeah, there's the signals. Bring some microphone around for you. Been a minute since I videoed. But that's okay. We're getting there. So we're going to make sure these three don't touch. On this uh, snap on meter, uh, quick tip of the day hold the function button while you turn it on. And it will stay on it won't beep off there for you um, let's see if I can find a place where I can see what's going on there we go we're gonna strip these wires back just whoa they're gonna be okay something like that there you go we're gonna strip these wires back just a touch I know I'm using flush cuts but that's okay We're doing some down and dirty testing right now. So we really don't care. So we should show a positive and negative five volt reference at some point here. What do we got here? Nothing. Wait, we got 4.7 volts positive. All right, so we're gonna use what we know. And these two here, nothing. These two here, we got a negative 4.99 volts. Switch these around. Positive five, four, five. We're gonna go here, four, nothing. So we have a negative four here, positive four here, positive four there, and we have a five there, and a negative and a negative five there. So this one here seems to be our positive end. And one of these is the ground, so that's our positive right there. So we're going to twist that one up nicely, so that's our positive. Now we just have to figure out our signal wire, which one's which. And we have a 97AY and a 97, the positive I believe is a 90. 
97OY2 and this is a 97AY and this is a 97H something so that's kind of where we're at I don't know if there's any way of looking on here but we have A, B and C is down here. So if we look at our picture, we're gonna say positive is uh, positive is B, and then we have a negative, which is connected to a whole bunch of other negatives. Then the ground goes through BCM. So. Uh, we're going to put pin B to positive. So where is this one at? And we're going to pop this off. And it's actually, it actually shows you on this connector right here, A, B, and C. So we're going to hold this one the same way. And we got A, shows you on here. So here is A. Like I said, we're just doing this as a test real quick to make sure everything's good. So where's that twisted wire? We're gonna just twist these together for now. And then we're gonna see if we have continuity. We should have continuity between, that is showing a negative. So that's, And that is showing an open, negative open. So we want to see what one we're getting a little bit of voltage out of. Nothing. Point one. They're both showing grounds. Point four. 0 0.02, 0 0.01, 0 0.04. So let's see if we put this in here. Let's strip this one back. Let's see if we Should lose all of our codes if we have this hooked up right. So let's go take a look at our codes. See if it went inactive. Because I don't think it'll have to be running for that to be inactive. So let's go over here. Let's check it out. Let's see where we're at. Nice part is with this is you want to flop between the diagnostics menu and the the other piece, you go here, and then you can go to, uh, uh, let's go back here, and then we can refresh. Boost pressure inner incorrect, so let's swap them the other way. And uh, see if we get those signals right. We're going to swap. So we have no codes. So now we're going to go over to back to here. Monitoring. Live data. Accept this because you want to add triggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. So. Here we go.
that's the only intake manifold one that I see. Vehicle speed. Screw, 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 power takeoff. Throttle position. Let's check out throttle position so we got more than one thing going on there. Uh, turbo pressure, there we go. Holy cow. Now we should see turbo pressure. That's what they're calling it. Awesome. We'll go against atmospheric pressure. How's that sound? Then we'll come up here to engine speed. We'll do this one too. Just because we can. And we're going to search right here. Throttle positions at zero. 4.6. Engine speed 700. Turbo pressure. Turbo pressure does not move, which means we have those hooked up backwards more than likely. So I gotta figure that out. I'm hoping diesel laptops calls back. It is 2.42 p.m. right now. I'm still waiting for a call back for the wiring diagram. We shall see. Well, here we go. I gotta do a voiceover because I forgot to turn the microphone on. So anyway, it was 3.30 in the afternoon, and I got tired of waiting for a response from Diesel Laptop. So I called back. Um, it was 2 o'clock, so it was an hour and a half later, right? Um, usually they're within 20 minutes or so of getting back with you. Well, here's what happened. At 2.21 p.m., I called at 2, within 20 minutes or so, they responded via email. Now, that was really, really nice of them. And it was actually very, very efficient. Like, I had a PDF with everything that I needed to do. And it was exactly what I needed. So, I ended up finding, I don't know what I show you here. But I'm just going to tell you exactly what I found is the wire numbers. was uh, So, your signal ground was 97DC. Your voltage reference was 97CY, and 97AY is the actual signal. Um, here I am. I'm explaining how I want to solder um, some of these wires. Um, I like using these. Uh, see, here it is, 338. You just seen it on my watch. Um, but that's after I got off the phone with them, and then it was confirmed. Now, I already did the power wire, um, the 5-volt reference wire. I already had that in there. But these shrink connectors... You do not crimp them. You use them as a solder joint. So it's a solder joint and a uh, shrink connector all in one. And I really like them. This snap-on heat shrink tube uh, thing is not my favorite. Um, it's just not. It, it doesn't put out the heat like it should, I don't think, personally. But it's fairly good for what it is, if that makes any sense. Um... I guess on this whole, the end of this year, I'm going to kind of uh, wrap it up here with this repair, but it does fix it, and I believe when we get a little faster in here, or a little later on, I'm going to show it with no codes, and uh, it's all set. But as far as diesel laptops and Jaltus is concerned, um, Jaltus has been very good for what it is. I mean... Uh, I've explained it to a couple people as it is like a, uh, you know, the diesel laptops and stuff. It's like a crescent wrench, right? Um, you know, it, it's not the perfect fit for everything, but it's a good fit for most things uh, when it comes to that. Um, th this has been, like I said, I, I'm not trying to, um, you know, sell, sell you on it or whatever, but from my experience with Jaltist on the truck side here, it's been great. I have hooked uh, multiple machines, uh, Bobcats and uh, Dusa with Dusans in them, a Bobcat with a Kubota in it, another Kubota and a Takahuchi. Um, there's been lots of machines that I've been hooking to lately. John Deere's. Um, I have not. I've hooked to a Cat Truck engine, but that's about it. I've hooked to a Cummins. There was one thing that they didn't have in Cummins uh, for a VGT actuator, but that was on a six seven early six seven in a motorhome 
um, with a CM850 uh, ECM in it. But here you can see how it goes to clear on these connectors, these solder joints. I, I like it. It makes it a good solid for what we have for rust here and corrosion in Michigan. Um, I think it's just as good as heat shrink and uh, anything else because you have your solder joint inside already. Um, just gives, I don't want to poke nothing on this uh, on a harness at all, right? So it just makes it way nicer. One solid band of uh, solder and it works really well. So I guess I just have this one last one to do, and then I'm going to do the outro here. So I guess uh, you'll see here in this while I'm talking how nice and clear this shrinkable connector goes. Um, I really do like these, like I just said a few seconds ago. <laughs> but whatever, it is what it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, check us out on Saturdays on the live stream at nine o'clock at night eastern standard time i always appreciate that so uh you guys have a good one and we will check you later